Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that would be of interest to libraries um, across Nebraska and across the country. Um, we broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us, that's fine. We do record the show every week and it is posted to our website for you to watch when it is convenient for you. And I'll show you at the end of today's show on our website where you can access all of our archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, please do share uh, with your share our website with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone who you think might be interested in any of our topics we have on the show. We do a they're welcome to sign up for uh, register for our upcoming shows or watch any of our archives that are listed there. We do a um, cover a mixture of things here on the show. Um, basically, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for all libraries in the state of Nebraska. So we have presentations that are for uh, public libraries, academic, K-12, correction facilities, museums. It pretty much runs the gamut. Anything, any type of library, you'll find something in our show archives that would be of interest to you. Um, and we do shows on book reviews, demos, mini training sessions, uh, resources and products and services we think you may be interested in, um, the libraries that are doing cool new things that we want to share with you. Um, it's all over the place, <laughs> but that's good. Uh, we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do presentations for us for things that we're offering here, um, specifically within Nebraska, but we also bring in guest speakers, and that's what we have this morning. Um, on the line with us today is Teresa Stannard, who is the Library Director at the Parchment Community Library in Parchment, Michigan. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning. Hi. And she is back with us. She was here a couple of weeks ago talking about how they were they uh, ditched Dewey at their library. <laughs> Um, and you'll see we have that in our archives. If you're interested in, in ditching Dewey, the Dewey Decimal System at your library, you can watch that one. But today she's talking about finding and fixing things, um, working with their community to um, work on things going on in their town. So I will just hand it over to you, Teresa, to take it away and tell us what you guys did there. Perfect. Thank you. And good morning, everybody. Um, I'll be talking today about um, our community action group that started about a year ago and uh, how we run meetings and what we've accomplished. And hopefully that will be helpful to you if you are uh, thinking about starting a group of your own or if you've started a group and have run into some problems. So mm -hmm. off we go. And here's the, uh, the list of topics that I'm hoping to cover today. Um, I'll give you as briefly as possible a history of the city of Parchment. Um, because I think it is um, germane to the discussion and every city, of course, has its own special history. And, uh, and it's one of those things that makes living in a small town such fun. And I'll talk about, of course, how we got the group started, how we run our meetings and some of the accomplishments of our first year. So here's a picture of the library. Uh, we are in Parchment, Michigan, that is just north of Kalamazoo, which is in the southwest corner of the Lower Peninsula of Michigan. The city itself is just a square mile. We've got about 1,800 people living here, and um, the library district is larger than that, and we serve just under 10,000 people. And if you have ever met a Michigander, you know that if you ask us where we live, we will not tell you without raising our hand and pointing on our hand where we live. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter. It's either the Lower Peninsula, Upper Peninsula, we do it. So this guy here in the lower right is pointing exactly to Kalamazoo. So now you know where in the Lower Peninsula of Michigan I'm sitting right now. Um, here is an overhead view from about 1934, taken from the water tower of Parchment, Michigan. We're looking over the very, uh, the newly dedicated uh, park. And you can see, um, I'll try to point here, there's a smokestack here, there on the left. Uh, that is the Kalamazoo Vegetable Parchment Company. And they made, no kidding, parchment paper. And that's mm -hmm. why the city of Parchment is named Parchment. 
And uh, the mill runs from here all along to all the way to the other side. It was enormous. And that dark line you see just behind it is the Kalamazoo River. And um, so when the mill started in 1909, uh, there was nothing here. And uh, the workers had to come from Kalamazoo. And in 1909, the road from Kalamazoo to here, which was the middle of nowhere, was impassable when it got too rainy or too snowy. And so the workers had a terrible time coming to the mill to work. And they would come down barges on the river or walk on the river if it was frozen. And then they would pitch tents uh, and live next to the mill. So it was uh, pretty bad in the early days. And it wasn't long before the mill owner, Jacob Kindleberger, uh, started building homes to uh, house the workers that wanted to work at his mill. And that's certainly not an unusual story. Many, many mill towns got started in exactly the same way. What differentiates parchment is that Jacob Kindleberger wanted to not only build a model paper mill, he wanted to build a model city with all the amenities and have the highest quality of life for the townspeople as could be managed. And so he built a community house, which unfortunately doesn't exist anymore, but it was absolutely gorgeous and huge. And it had a full-size auditorium with a stage, it had a dining hall, it had a full kitchen that the community could use, it had a wood shop, it had an exercise room. It was something else. And um, so then in 1933, he donated 60 acres of his own land uh, for this park that you see here. Uh, and it had just been completed. And, um, and that was another wonderful thing with the baseball diamond and tennis courts and uh, pavilions and a sunken garden. It was a really nice place to live. And for 90 years, uh, the paper mill uh, was really the driving force behind the town. And families would have generations of people that had worked at the mill. And most of the townspeople did work at the mill and knew one another. So it was an extraordinarily close knit family atmosphere in this small square mile city. But uh, all good things come to an end and this did. And in 2000, the mill closed for the final time after changing hands a few times and it took our tax base with it. Uh, we have a handful of small businesses, but nothing compared to uh, the taxes that were generated by the mill. Uh, so the townspeople had to choose what were they going to do? Would they merge with a neighboring municipality, whether Kalamazoo or a township, or would they raise their taxes and remain autonomous? And they voted by a wide margin to raise their taxes. And um, we're still here, uh, we're still struggling, we're still pinching pennies as a city, but we are still here. And um, so the, the thing happened, we thought, well, we'll just repurpose the, the mill property and we got a developer on board and everything was going swimmingly. We had a great design. And that was in 2007 and, two, and just as work was about to get started, the economy crashed and the housing bubble burst and that plan fell apart. And at the same time, many of our uh, homes were uh, turned into rentals because they couldn't sell. And that also had something, uh, a big effect on the, uh, the family feeling of the town uh, because the renters didn't feel the same kind of ownership and sense of belonging as uh, the former residents had. And the library hosted some KVP reunions back in 2009, 10 and 11 for people for, who used to work the mill to come back for a big reunion and party, and that was lovely, but it just wasn't enough. And uh, as the years went on, more and more people, I would hear them uh, at events or on Facebook or at the library saying, uh, you know, this needs fixed, that needs fixed. But the common refrain was always, nothing ever gets done, nothing ever gets fixed. And um, I had been paying attention to all of the libraries and in, in community engagement type uh, seminars, but I couldn't figure out quite how to make it happen here. Um, and then, uh, as I was haunting one of the community Facebook pages, I noticed there was a group wanting to start a neighborhood watch. I went, aha, some people getting organized. So I invited myself to the meeting, and uh, that became uh, the core group for our Parchment Town Hall group. And um, 
then I had them talk to everybody else they knew that uh, was passionate about seeing something happen. And also I talked to the people who I knew who'd come to the library, uh, who had a lot of things to say about what should be fixed. And I invited them to come. So we got a core group of very um, interested, engaged, passionate folks. And we started meeting um, at the library in July, 2017, and we meet every month on the third Thursday. And as luck would have it, and boy, I do mean luck, we had just installed a new city manager at that time. And she uh, was and is uh, very enthusiastic and energetic and anxious to meet townspeople and get involved. And that was just wonderful. So if you have a city manager or something similar and you can get that person in your group or at least cooperating with your group, um, you're miles ahead. I created a website with Wix.com. It's free um, and it's simple. And here's the URL to it. And I'll show you very briefly what it looks like. I won't go through everything by any means, just to give you a quick glance at it. Uh, it's simple, but it works. And that's where we put all of uh, what we're doing, everything, what we plan to do, what we have done, what we're currently working on, all the minutes of the meetings, all the agendas, everything's there. I decided not to make a Facebook page for the group. Instead, I talked to the, the moderators of the existing community Facebook groups, and they all agreed to allow me to post freely what this uh, town hall group is doing. And uh, that's how we're getting the word out. And I think really that's more effective than if I had just made my own Facebook page and hope that everybody found it. So your town already had a Facebook page for itself. Several, several. several. We have Parchment Living, we have Parchment Then and Now, uh -huh. uh, we have the city, city government Facebook page also. Mm. And there are a couple of neighborhood pages too that I occasionally throw things. Yeah. That makes sense. And yeah, not everything. I mean, Facebook is very useful for a lot of things, but that's actually a great way to do it. You don't always have to create your own for something, especially in this kind of a community based program. Right. Get into their pages. Yeah. I like how yeah. you also how you phrased that you invited yourself to the neighborhood watch meeting. <laughs> that's something I think a lot of librarians need to do more. Invite yourself to things that are going on in your town. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's it's uh, yeah quite wonderful, and I was welcome, and I think you would be too. Everybody would be. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, this might be a point to just quickly glance at that website. I won't take any time at all for it. Um, yep, there it is. Um, so it says um, who we are, what we're doing, when we meet. And then, as I say, we've got, uh, as you can see, the meetings, uh, uh, current projects, completed projects, a community survey that I'm going to talk about, and of course, how to contact us if they want more information. And uh, a little further down, uh, a list of accomplishments from our first year, which I'll show you in a little bit. And then our local public access TV station um, heard about the group. Well, I kind of told them about the group, and <laughs> they agreed to send a film crew and uh, did a lovely little uh, piece about our town hall group early on. And, and I thought, great, I'll link to it. So as long as that exists on their website, then uh, I'll, I'll show it off. So if people wanna see what we're all about, they can watch that quick uh, four minute video. Uh, but completed projects, um, as I say, it's just a, a dead simple um, Wix site. I just have what we did and when and what happened. So. It couldn't be simpler, but it gets the job done. And now back to, I hope, the slideshow. Yep, there we go. All right, so you've got a group and you're gonna meet and um, <laughs> you suddenly realize you're sitting in a room with very opinionated, vocal, passionate people. What are you going to do with that? Um, and I, I, I thought about it myself before the meeting. I thought, okay, now I know who's coming and gosh, how are we going to get through a meeting? Um, not because they're bad people, because they're energetic and vocal and they care deeply about the town and they are anxious for, um, you know, a place to, to be listened to. And I think that's key. Don't be afraid of those energetic vocal people. I am the world's biggest introvert. Look up introvert in the encyclopedia. There's my picture. So I'm not the one who would normally lead something like this, but it was up to me. So I had to figure it out. And I found that what you do 
is of course you let everybody say what they need to say. Um, but then you give them something to do. So don't shut them out, give them a job. And you, I have not had a single one say, nope, I'm sorry, I can't be bothered. They grab it and run with it and it's something to see. So um, don't fear the energetic folks. They're, they're gonna be your best friends. And um, I announced at the beginning of every meeting that everyone present will have a chance to speak, but I reserve the right to intervene if I think the point has been made and we need to move the meeting forward. And now they all know me. Uh, and so I usually phrase it as, um, if I stop you, it's not because I don't love you anymore because you know that I do, it's because we need to keep going and everybody laughs at that. So however you wanna phrase it is fine, but make sure they know that if you step in and you will step in, it's nothing personal. It's because you're moving the agenda forward. Um, and announce that the meeting's gonna be an hour. If people know there's a time limit, they tend to police themselves with their comments by and large and uh, that it does we've we've never had an hour meeting yet it always runs over um, but the longest has been an hour and 45 and that was because it was a monster of a meeting we had a huge amount of things to deal with um, and typically they're an hour and 15 maybe an hour and a half at the latest but announce it's going to be an hour <laughs> they don't need to know it's you're going to cut it off at an hour and uh, and that'll help them also those people who want to go on and on they might be thinking about that and it won't go on quite as much but I think the most important thing to keep the meeting uh, from uh, getting derailed with someone who's on a rant is to always focus everything into an action. You're going to make change happen. You're not going to talk about changes that need to be made. No, you're going to change things. So as the discussion's going, and this works over and over again, I can't tell you how well this works, um, someone comes up with a problem. Most recently, they were saying, you know, we still have a bad speeding problem in town. The police are doing what they can, but there are a couple of roads that, frankly, we're worried about some, some kids going to get killed because the speeding is so bad. What can we do? This is really bad. And everybody's nodding, yeah, it's really bad. And so I, that's my point as a moderator to say, okay, we've got a speeding problem. Has anybody been to another city that seemed to be handling it really well? And there were a couple of hands went up. Yeah, and we talked about that. And I said, anybody else got any ideas for what we might do or who could we talk to get ideas about this? And so people are singing out and that's when you say, okay, who wants to be in charge of the speed committee? The speed comp, we call it speed calming. Who wants to be in charge of the speed calming committee? We've got a couple of co-chairs, anybody? Hands went up instantly. And I said, okay, what are you gonna start with? And they. And then, then we have a little brief discussion about what they're going to start with, who they're going to talk to. And I, I say, that's, that's fantastic. Bring it back to the next meeting. And boom, there it is. So if you have somebody who's complaining about something, um, acknowledge it. Say, yeah. And, and then say, if they're on a rant, break up the rant. Say, okay, we hear you. Thanks so much. Anybody else seeing this problem also? And if you get a lot of, or any, even a couple of, yeah, we see it too. Say, okay, how are we going to fix it? How are we going to fix it? That changes the tenor of the conversation. It starts things moving in a very positive direction and you don't have somebody on their soapbox ranting for an hour and a half. So keep a laser focus on turning complaints into actions and you're gonna win every time. Here is uh, an example of the agenda that I put together for our last meeting. Um, and uh, we have a lot of regulars now, but we occasionally have new people too, and I want them to know what we're about. So I always have our mission, uh, which is as simple as it can be, but it needs to be clear. And uh, then that little welcome that I've just been talking about, it's gonna be an hour, everybody's gonna be heard, no one voice will be allowed to predominate. Uh, we're gonna focus on defining, prioritizing, and solving problems. And we are task oriented. There's our motto that I, you've seen before. We find and we fix, that's our big motto. Um, meaning we get it done, we don't just talk about it. And we always end a meeting with a to-do list and agenda for the next one. So we keep things rolling and uh, we have everyone fill out an attendance card if they're new. And on it, I get their name of course and the date they attended, but I also get their phone if uh, we're allowed to send them a text message or not, if they live in the city or not, and their email. And I don't use the text message, but I keep it in my back pocket in case there's a hot button something that happens and I need to get a text out to everybody saying, we need you now. 
Uh, and the email is great because I built an email group for this. And before every meeting, a few days, I sent out a reminder that we've got another monthly meeting coming up. Hope to see you there. So that's very useful. Um, as you can see from this agenda, we had a presentation about recycling. We normally don't have a presentation, but it, it was nice. So we may have more as they uh, present themselves. Uh, we talk about notable events in town since the last meeting. But here's the crux of it, and I want to point this out to you. It's the follow-up from the last month's meeting. <clears throat> take notes or have a volunteer take notes of everything that's brought up that needs addressing and revisit it without fail at the next meeting. And you'll be amazed at the number of things that get crossed off the list in, in a month, in just one month. They are found and they are fixed in one month. And if they're not, you get a progress report and, uh, and still moving forward. So that's key. If you're not doing it, I suggest that you do it. If you haven't started your group, do please consider um, this particular item on your agenda. It's the follow-up line by line, no matter how small. And you can see some of these things are kind of small. Doesn't matter. They get fixed and they make a positive effect on your town and people notice. So uh, mm -hmm. keep up with all of it. No small task, I can tell you. Yeah, every little thing matters, especially in this in well in any town. There's always that you never know who is mm -hmm. most concerned about the little thing that you might think isn't important, but it will yep. them, it will affect someone's life and make things better for them, and that's what matters. Exactly. So as uh, it's not what you say, it's what you do. Just what your mama said. It's really true. Um, keep those projects coming. Uh, they not only make the people in your town happier, they attract positive attention to your town. Um, and it could be um, neighboring uh, municipalities. It could be people who might give you a grant, hint, hint, uh, might notice that you're doing cool things with your town and they'll be positively disposed to give you that grant. It could be and if somebody might think your town's a good place to live now or uh, to put their business. I mean, it's all good. Nothing's bad about uh, keeping those projects going and keeping them uh, in the public eye. So publicize it any way you can, whatever you got, use it. We don't have uh, much of a city, we don't have a city paper here in Parchment and the Kalamazoo paper is greatly reduced, but I do to let them know when we're having something special happening and they'll occasionally send a reporter. Uh, I do the same with our local Kalamazoo TV station. They will occasionally, rarely, send a film crew but it has happened um and our local uh public media access station public media network that they've been wonderful in covering what we do and again um all of those uh facebook things uh we occasionally let our churches know uh that something's uh, happening that might affect them so whatever you got use it and keep it going keep if nothing if it's nothing but facebook keep something at least twice a month about your group on those Facebook pages so that you're never really out of everybody's thoughts, that they know that group is still there, still doing something. <clears throat> and one more time, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, as I've been ranting about, keep everything task oriented. It will solve every problem you've got. If you've got somebody who wants to hog the meeting, it will derail them. If people are wondering if this group is worthwhile, they'll realize that it is. And then everybody who's not attending meetings will see what you're doing. And that is positive all the way around. So keep everybody busy and engaged. Um, I suggest if you haven't done it, do a community survey. Uh, we did one with SurveyMonkey, which is real easy to use. Um, it can be free. I decided to pay the $30 a month because I wanted a few more bells and whistles for this one. Uh, but it, we only ran it a couple of months. so. At least I only paid for it a couple of months. The survey itself took uh, six, six weeks. Um, and so it's not that much money out of pocket, but you can do it with the free one. And we also ran paper surveys. And gosh, if you can do it, please do. Because then you're getting face-to-face -face comments with residents, and there's nothing finer than that. So we had volunteers from the group go out to um, local restaurants, and they would, with the restaurant owner's permission, sit at a table and they would have a stack of paper surveys and a sign announced what they're up to. And I recommend a bowl of candy because nothing gets people to come up to your table like free candy sitting there. Um, chocolate works every time. So um, then, then you get to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people and it's great. 
and we took all of the data from the paper surveys, put it into SurveyMonkey manually. So SurveyMonkey was our go-to resource for correlating all the data. And we got 100 responses total, which doesn't seem like much. But those responses were so valuable and so thoughtful and so inventive. I thought it would be really, I was expecting to get a lot more uh, Facebook kind of rants where people just grump because they can. Uh, and we got a couple of those, but most people really sat down and thought, huh, what would make this town better? And they wrote it down. It was amazing. Uh, and then once the survey's done, uh, you'll get the raw data and I've got that posted on the website, but it's a lot better if you take some, you or somebody else takes that data and uh, groups it into subject types, uh, get, get all those answers uh, correlated and make it really easy to scan through and digest for the reader and then share it everywhere. I mean, it, the link to the survey results went on all the Facebook pages, uh, you can bet as soon as it was ready. Um, and the library's website as well. And, uh, and I, I will say, keep the survey simple. I'll reiterate that. Um, we asked, what are your top three ideas to make Parchment a great place to live? How simple is that? And for the paper surveys, we only asked them for one because it, they were just walking up to a table. So we didn't want to burden them with too much. And uh, even a simple question like that can yield wonderful results. So don't make your survey overly complicated or people won't take it, I guarantee. And then once you've got the results, use them. And that's where we started. As soon as we got those results, we grabbed a few uh, to start with as our first projects, our first big projects. <clears throat> People were complaining about uh, the feeling that the, the family feeling of the town was, was, was dissolving. And they were mourning that loss. And they said, we need more community events beyond the big summer event that we always have every year. We need more. So we gave them more and they were well attended. Um, they wanted a citywide garage sale. We'd never done it. We had one and we had a huge response. It was fantastic. And our park, which is the gem of the city, in fact, I think it's a gem of the county, uh, has a sunken garden, which was in fact the gem of the park. And it's, uh, we just don't have the resources anymore to really keep it up. So it was languishing and people were mourning that as well, saying, can anyone fix up the sunken garden? So we took that on as a project. Ooh. Um, here's just briefly, uh, there's the sign that we put on our tables uh, when we were doing those uh, in-person surveys at the restaurants and the parks and other events and things. And there's an example of the uh, paper survey card. And I used it to promote the group. You can see it says, we meet the third Thursday every month at the library, please come. So uh, use anything you can to promote the group anywhere you can. Um, I've got a link here on this slide to the survey results uh, that are on our uh, town hall website. I also created uh, an instruction sheet for the volunteers who are conducting those in-person surveys. I've got it here um, linked to a Google Doc in case you would like to do that yourself and might get some handy hints from those instructions. So when the slides go up um, later today or tomorrow, you'll be able to click that link and get to that Google Doc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll just, while you're mentioning that, Teresa, I'll just yeah. let everyone know, yes, when we do put up the archive of this, um, we will include these slides as well. So um, you'll have the links to everything that's within here. Um, we also actually linked to the town hall page from the session description um, already. But when you get notified of the arc of the recording, you'll have both this video and all of the slides and everything that Teresa has here available to you. Yep. Okay. And here's a list of what we accomplished uh, for last month's meeting. It was our one year anniversary. So I put together this uh, synopsis of what we'd accomplished. And we were really rather surprised at all we had gotten done. Um, I would say we have about 15 regulars who come and sometimes we have up to 20 people, which is great. We'd love to have as many as want to come, but that's our group. So it's not a huge group. And a lot of this um, I can thank our city manager for because she will put it on her to-do list and talk to the powers that be that need to get it done. Uh, so that's been a big help also in getting so much accomplished. At the beginning, we decided to divide up our, our focuses uh, into uh, several main groups, uh, community engagement, which people were calling for in the survey, um, how to help our government uh, work more efficiently, get more things done, uh, beautifying the town and uh, supporting our local businesses and encouraging more to come. 
So those were the main groups. And so that's how I uh, grouped our, our results here. And under community engagement, I'll point out a couple of winners. Um, the Party for the Park was in June. It, it celebrated the 85th anniversary of the dedication of our Newburger Park. And we decided to recreate that 1933 event in that we had an ice cream social and we, it, it was one of those things that works out so well. You don't, you hope that it will, and then it did. Um, the church ladies built, built, baked dozens of cakes, dozens of cakes for this. But we had cake and ice cream for everybody. And 500 people came. And when I saw this mountain of cakes piling up, I thought, we'll never get rid of all this. Who can we donate these cakes to at the end of the event? Well, they all got eaten. They got eaten. And um, we recreated the speeches that were given. We had somebody impersonate Jacob Kindleberger and the town mayor, our, our current mayor impersonated the original mayor uh, back in 1933. Um, and we had bands playing in the gazebo and live music. We had painters, the plein air artists group from Kalamazoo County came and were painting the park during the event. People just walk up to the painters and stand behind them and watch them paint. It was the best event. And that has had ripple effects. Um, the public media network uh, came and did a promo for the event ahead of time. Then they filmed the event and did a lovely eight minute synopsis film of it. And they were so taken with the history of our town and the beautiful celebratory feeling that happened that day that on their own, they created a 30 minute documentary of the history of parchment and have now given me the rights to it so that I can distribute the DVDs. I can put it on our website. And that was all free of charge to us. We didn't ask for it. We just got it because we wow. had this event. So what I'm saying is you never know what's going to happen when you do something like this or who's going to see it and who's going to take it and run with it and what good things might boomerang back to you. So, and then the citywide garage sale I did mention was a, a real big success for us. Now government, I want to point out um, the first complaint that we got, first meeting, uh, one of those energetic folks said, I have been yapping at that city commission to figure out what to do with this mill property. Other towns around us have lost their paper mills and they're doing a better job than we are. Why don't they get over there and find out how they did it, what they're doing? And I said, oh, that's a heck of an idea. That's a good idea. I said, uh, I think we should. What cities do you think we should ask? And we got a list of six. And I said, do we have volunteers to put together a list of questions and then go visit those cities? And then we'll bring all the data back and present it to the commissioners because our city commissioners are just folks with day jobs. I mean, they don't get paid. This is a small town. So these people are working uh, at least 40 hours a week. They don't have time to go visit other cities. And so our volunteers did, and we uh, went to uh, five of the six cooperated with us and had really wonderful, generous meetings with us. And uh, we brought back uh, all the data correlated it, put it into beautiful binders, and handed one to every commissioner and the city manager at the February meeting. And uh, they thanked us. And then in May, I get this beautiful letter back from the city mayor and the city manager telling us it was a laundry list of changes that they had already taken based on the data we gathered and how much money the city is already saving in three months uh, from the time we presented that to them. So we had a really positive, substantial, significant effect on the life of our town by doing that. And it all started out with a complaint. So like I said, and the person who made that complaint was the person who did most of the interviews. He was on it. He was on it 110% and uh, really put a lot of time and effort into it. And he was the one that, uh, you know, you might think, oh, he's going to go on too long. He's going to get on his soapbox. But no, he didn't. He, took, he, he was given something to do to make a positive change for his town, and he was all about it. So another win for us. Another one that if you can do, please do. Uh, we had a meet the candidates forum in November, and we, we had three seats open on the city commission. And we held a forum for the candidates, and it was run really nicely. I thought it was a success. And again, the public media network came and filmed it. So for those people who weren't able to see it, I was able to link to their film and post it on all the Facebook pages so people could watch uh, before the election. They could watch the forum if they cared to. At the end of that, what we have are three new city commissioners who have a lot of warm fuzzies for the town hall group. And they come to our meetings quite often. 
So it's a win for everybody. It was a win for the candidates. It was a win for the community to know what the candidates were all about before the election. And it was a win for town hall because now we have a city commission that is positively disposed toward the group. Uh, as far as beautification goes, we're doing a lot of it. We're getting, we have uh, weekly cleanup crews that go through a particular uh, section of town that tends to collect a lot of trash. And um, we are getting new benches in the park and along sidewalks downtown uh, that are mostly donated. Um, and the sunken garden is getting refurbished. Uh, our garden club, which is an active garden club, contacted uh, through town hall, they contacted the county master gardeners uh, collective and they're volunteering their time twice a month. Local residents also come to the group twice a month to work on the sunken garden. The soccer team came last year on invitation and the kids did a lot of the heavy lifting that the older folks couldn't. Uh, and um, this year they asked us if they could come back, please. <laughs> we said, yes, yes, you may. <laughs> Uh, and they came back, bless them, the soccer team came and uh, it was gorgeous. And, and then we've had um, a local greenhouse donate plants and mulch and delivered it for free. And we've had the Daisy Scouts help with planting, which was a sight to see, you can imagine. Uh, so anyway, it's all good, all good. And I'm gonna show you a little bit later uh, more on the sunken garden. We have had, uh, we lost our police force because of the budget and now we're contracting with the neighboring township police force. A lot of bad blood on that. I mean, people were complaining a lot about that because they knew our policemen and, and loved them. And now here's a new crew that we don't know. And the, uh, we've, uh, we, the, the township police are coming regularly to the town hall meetings. And through that, they've come to our events and it's simmering down there. The people are getting to know these, these officers and the officers are getting to know us. And it's really smoothing out what was quite a rocky thing for the town. So that's good too. Uh, and then we're getting a few new businesses in, which is just absolutely lovely. And uh, we are uh, continuing to contact our local businesses to see if there's anything that we can do for them or the city can do for them. And as you can see, there are a lot of found and fixed things, tiny things, but they make a difference. Um, one guy came in and said, you know, every day on my walk, I pick up trash between this corner and that corner. It's always trash there. Could we get a trash can at either end? And maybe that would take care of it. The city manager said, of course. And within a day, there were two new trash cans there. And the, and the litter problem is gone. Now it's a clean block. So um, little things can make such a difference. And we're still working on things and I'd never let the group forget that we have things we haven't accomplished yet and uh, we'll get there. Okay, uh, so anyway, do, do please, as your group goes on, um, whenever it's appropriate, uh, take a moment to reflect on what you've accomplished. It was an eye opener for us, how much we've gotten done. So uh, to recap all of this, um, keep talking, keep networking, uh, keep looking for a path to yes. When there's nothing but no in front of you, be the world's kindest bulldog. Um, gently close your teeth on that ankle of no and don't let go. Uh, and eventually you're going to get to a yes. Um, keep telling everybody you know about your group. Uh, keep, uh, keep it on Facebook, as I said, just keep it out there. And um, talk, invite people that you think would never come. <laughs> invite your governor, invite your state senators. Uh, invite your county commissioners, invite people you think just wouldn't ever show up. And I, you don't need to do it every week, but say quarterly, send them an invitation, let them know what you're doing uh, and that they're always welcome. And uh, we, would, we would love to have them visit and you'll get surprised. Uh, we've had a state senator show up. We've had our county commissioner show up a couple of times um, and uh, hot diggity dog. I mean, that's all to the good. And also, uh, contact your local police, your school teachers and administrators, your business owners, and of course, all the city government people. Um, make sure they know they are more than welcome to come uh, because you never know. Uh, and, and even if they don't come, they know about your group and they know they're welcome and they know you're doing good things. And that's still a positive, even if they don't show up at a meeting. So, keep and they up. know that they're their constituents, their community members are concerned about what's going on in the town. Mm -hmm. If they're not coming to it and, and seeing this, they know that this thing is happening and they probably should pay attention if they aren't. Yeah. 
Exactly. Exactly. So, and and as I've said ad nauseum, so I won't read through the final paragraph, but it, keep it keep it in front of every local media you've got, whatever that may be. Um, just keep it out there at least twice a month on Facebook. If if you can't do more than that, do that. All righty. And you, I've been talking about our sunken garden. Here's the before picture. Um, it was mightily overgrown. The flowers were gone. Um, a lot of green. And I can tell you that a lot of that green is poison ivy that you're looking at there. Uh, and that's one of the things the soccer team was kind enough to help us uh, figure out. But everything is horribly overgrown. And this was taken uh, just before the town hall group took it on as a project. So that was uh, um, the beginning of the summer last year. And here we go. Here's the after picture. This was taken last week. Hey, how about that? Oh, look at that. <laughs> you can see color and you can see the border stones. They're not so overgrown. And there are, of course, it's an ongoing project, but this is an awfully good start. And as I can tell you, everything that you see here was done by volunteers, all of it. All of the flowers were donated and planted by volunteers. Uh, the, the mulch was donated and delivered. Um, it's, it's just an amazing, uh, story and I'll, I'll show you the close up. And there we are. Oh, wow. Uh, tennis wow. courts in the background, but look at all those beautiful flowers that didn't exist uh, last year. And, um, and the Daisy Scouts uh, put them in and the soccer team helped. And even though the Daisy Scouts, being Daisy Scouts, needed a lot of supervision, what those girls and their moms and dads uh, now have is a sense of ownership. It's their park. It's their sunken garden. Uh, they don't live where there is a sunken garden. They own it now because they helped work on it. And all of the, the citizen volunteers who show up for these work sessions, it's their park now. And that's what we're getting toward is uh, rebuilding that sense of this isn't the place that you come to after work to sleep. This is your home and it's up to you to make it a better place. And uh, the gazebo here, you can see it's not looking too good, but this is again a town hall project. Someone mentioned it uh, last month. They said, you know, that gazebo really needs some work. And the city manager, bless her, um, got the public works guys on it and they've sanded it, which is what you see here. And uh, any day now they're gonna come out, now that it's stopped raining, they're gonna come out and uh, put a fresh coat of stain on it. So it'll be beautiful again. So um, just don't give up. Uh, it may be slow going, but once you get a couple of successful projects gone, I think you'll see the inertia will be moving in your favor and uh, some good things will be coming to your, your town. And it's all because of the library and nobody is more perfectly positioned than a community library for hosting these meetings, for coordinating things. Um, we do correlation for a living. So when you get the survey results, it's up to you as a librarian to correlate that data. It's what you do with your eyes shut. So um, make sure people know how valuable the library is and that everybody is welcome and that change is going to happen. So uh, that's all I've got for you today. Here's my contact information. And again, that link to our website. Do contact me, please. If I can help in any way, I'd be very happy. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, and I was just uh, thinking about that, the community garden there, the, the sunken garden there. Yes. That's the kind of thing too. Some of these projects are not a one-off either. That's, I mean, you specifically have actually mentioned there on your slide that the annuals that were planted. So these Daisy Scouts and the soccer team and whoever, they did this one year, it's going to have to be done again next year and yes. the next year. So it becomes a regular thing that they're constantly, you know, have, you know, coming back to do something. It's not just, oh, we did the one thing and now, you know, we're done. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, making it yeah. ongoing. Maybe we'll have a, a planting day or something every year. Yeah. And, uh, and we're also uh, working on, it's another town hall project, we're working on uh, creating a special fund for the upkeep of the park. Because right now we're, we've got wonderful donations, but we can't bank on that forever. So right. we're, we're coming up with uh, how to build, the right way to build a community fund mm -hmm. for that. So if anybody has any questions, comments you want to share, type into your questions section. Um, I'm curious, is anybody doing this kind of thing in their community? Do you have this kind of a program or, organiz or organized type discussion going on? Uh, let us know how you've um, pulled it off or handled it in your towns. 
uh, Teresa, so this was great. Um, as we, we had, we're chatting at the beginning before the show started, that um, this is you know something that some some towns may be doing this, um, uh, some larger ones. But I, you know, here in Nebraska, we have most of our communities are on the smaller side, as in uh, less than 2,500 population. Uh, so, and they do struggle that as you were describing in your community in parchment with um, is the town dying? Is everyone moving away? Are they, you know, I think you described the end here. They just think it's a place to come home and sleep and we do things elsewhere. Um, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have to be that way. And even the smallest town can do something like this and the library being the center of the community, which it very often is being the, there may not be a community center or somewhere where people can gather to do things like this. Uh, it's like a no-brainer, I think, <laughs> as you kind of described, um, mm -hmm. uh, being the ones who can spearhead this. Yeah, I think most towns don't have, um, you say, a senior services center or a community center of any kind. It's the library. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any urgent questions coming in at the moment, but that's okay. Um, people mm -hmm. may be thinking about what they want to do and and get you know taking this to their town. Uh, so there is Teresa's contact info. So if you do have any questions or anything you want to ask her more about or get some tips and tricks and more in-depth information about anything she did, um, they did in their town, reach out to her. There's the link to their um, uh, town hall webpage. And I'm gonna actually, um, so definitely reach out to her. I'm gonna pull back to my screen now and show you we have this link, as I said, also on, there we go, there we are on our um, the session page for today's show. Uh, there's a link here to the community, the library's website as well, um, but the actual town hall page with all the resources and information that Teresa was talking about, um, so you'll be able to quickly get to it from there um, as well. When um, the archive is up, we'll have the slides. So sometime later today, Teresa, you can email me your slides. Okie dokie. And then we'll get it posted up there. So, um, yeah, no, looks like nobody had any questions right now to ask of you, but hopefully they'll reach out to you later. We did have that um, happen with the previous session. So I think we will uh, officially wrap up for today. Um, thank you so much for being with us, Teresa. This is great to hear about all the awesome things that are going on in your town. I'm really excited about it. I'm glad you will be able to share with us today. Thank you. I had fun. Yeah, and thank you everyone for attending. As I said, the show um, is being recorded and we post it on our website. Um, this is our main page here for Encompass Live, where we have our upcoming shows listed here, but right underneath them is a link to our archives, and this is where our um, recordings go up. Um, the most recent ones first are at the top of the list, and then it goes down, and um, actually here's one that Teresa did first a few weeks ago, Ditching Dewey. So today's show will be hosted the same way. It will have a link to the recording in our um, YouTube channel, and the presentation posted onto our SlideShare page. You'll be able to get the slides and the archive. Uh, probably later uh, this afternoon, I should have it ready and, and posted as long as YouTube cooperates with the uploading and editing and all. Um, and everyone who attended today or was registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know that it's available. Um, I'll also post it to our various social media and um, mailing list as well, Twitter, Facebook, the whole um, gamut. Um, Encompass Live is also on is on Facebook. Um, we have a link here in each of our sessions. And I've got the page open over here. So if you are a big Facebook user, give us a like over there. We post reminders. Here's your reminder to log into today's show. Um, when our archives or recordings are available, we post on here. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you do keep up with things on Facebook, um, give us a like and you'll be notified of what we are doing. So um, that will be for today's show. I hope you join us next week when our topic is The Great American Read. Um, is everybody participating in this? I don't, you doing anything at your library related to this, Teresa? I don't put any on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have an event, but we have been publicizing it heavily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a great program um, that PBS is doing. Uh, you can vote right now for your favorite novel out of the hundred that they did as a, with a uh, that they came up with from a surveying. Um, 
American citizens. Um, and next week we are going to have um, Martha Florence, who's from our local um, Nebraska PBS station, NET Television, and Katie Murtha, who's from our Lincoln City Libraries, just up the street from our offices here, to talk about some resources they have available for libraries, um, share ideas and activities they have, and things that you can do to help promote it. Um, this is a program that is actually going into, it's been going all summer for voting, but um, next month is when they finally have the start the actual eight part series talking about it and the final wrap up in from goes of September and October so um, next um, week uh, join us to get some tips and tricks and ideas about what you can do to help work on that so that will wrap it up for today's show thank you everyone for attending and hopefully we'll see you next time on Encompass Live bye bye